Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris and you're watching Vsense. On today's video, we're gonna compare and contrast two of the biggest fragrances on the market for women. These are some of the top sellers, whether it's Mother's Day, whether it's Valentine's Day, whether it's Christmas, I am sure you have seen these at the very front of your store. They usually compete for space. They usually have all the nice signage, the nice ladies spray in the car. I know this because I work for both of these brands and these are their money makers. So let's get right into it to see which one is better for you. So here we have both of the fragrances. We have J'adore, the Eau de Parfum, and we have Coco Mademoiselle, the Eau de Parfum, the two originals, the two OG fragrances. Just so you do know, the packaging on this has been updated. The formulation hasn't changed very much. Uh, in fact, it hasn't changed in years, but the packaging has changed. It has gotten an update. This is the older packaging, if you will. They did change it to have a little curve, and now it's even nicer. They have had an evolution of packaging at Dior. Coco Mademoiselle is going to be the same thing still. You're still going to get the same traditional packaging, uh, which really sucks because if I can be honest with you, Chanel doesn't have the best packaging. I get that they have a very classic packaging. It's very nice to look at. It's iconic. I mean, who doesn't know this bottle without a label? If you see this bottle without a label, you know it's Chanel. The problem with this is that they do not update their packaging to fix some of the issues like this is wobbly. As you can see, the logo has kind of come off of the neck here. A little sad, but that is Chanel. Chanel gets away with a lot of things that they probably shouldn't get away with, but by all means, it's Chanel. So starting off with J'adore Dior, this fragrance was launched in 1999, so it was launched before Coco Mademoiselle. This fragrance is going to have Ylang Ylang Rose and Jasmine. So those materials are sourced from different places, but the point is that it is Ylang Ylang Rose and Jasmine in this fragrance. So it's very simple. It's a very nice fragrance. It is going to have a very floral heart to it, so you can definitely get the rose in this one. It's not going to be a rose that you would say is La Colle Noire or Rose de Vence by Louis Vuitton or Rose Prick or anything like that. It's a very delicate, soft bouquet of roses. The Ylang Ylang is very big in this fragrance. It is one of the stars of the show. And then the Jasmine, of course, really brings this one home. The combination of all of these notes really does it very well. Uh, this fragrance has been a top setter, like I said. It is a little dated, and, and I will say why, because we've smelled this before. We've loved it, we've appreciated it, but it's been replicated quite a bit of times. Not one-to-one, -one, so you're not going to find another fragrance that smells just like J'adore, but there are a lot of other ones that have the same contrasting category to this fragrance because it has been copied quite a bit. For example, you can kind of get that off of C by Giorgio Armani, the Eau de Parfum. You can kind of get that from romance. You know, they're not one-to-one -one comparisons, but they are very similar. With that being said, like I said, it has aged a little bit, but this fragrance is extremely nice, extremely classic, extremely sophisticated. This fragrance is one of those that I would certainly say is a dress-up fragrance. It's not very much a casual fragrance. So if you spray this and you're wearing jeans and a t-shirt, you will smell good by all means, but you're not going to, let's say, fit in if that makes any sense. Now going over to Coco Mademoiselle, this is a fragrance that we have here. This is what the bottle looks like. Very nice, like I said, very classic. A little crappy because it's not the highest quality, but it is classic. Like I said, this fragrance was launched in 2001, so it is launched after J'adore. And what can I say about this fragrance? It is known for being one of the top sellers in the world. I mean, so is J'adore. This fragrance is very peculiar. It's a very different. It's kind of like a very soft, clean floral candle, if that makes any sense, but done in the highest, highest grade of luxury that you possibly can. So although it has the qualities of a very soft, clean candle, it's also one of those fragrances that is very it's very unique and they really, you know, they really set out to make something very different with this one as they did with this one as well. If you ask me which one is a lot more unique with their it factor, I would certainly say Coco Mademoiselle is. Now, J'adore as of lately has not been as popular as Coco Mademoiselle. Obviously, Coco Mademoiselle is like the gateway drug of the fragrance community. And with that being said, everyone and their mom wears this fragrance. So if you're looking for uniqueness factor smell-wise, yes, the perfume did a really great job with making a unique scent, something that smells good, something that's loved, something that can be worn by everyone. 
this is definitely one that is a timeless classic. If you do look for something that, you know, isn't super unique when it comes to smell wise, at least a perfumer's composition, this one's not super unique, but it is not as popular as Coco Mademoiselle at the moment. They kind of fluctuate back and forth, so at some points you'll see J'adore selling more than Coco Mademoiselle, vice versa. Unfortunately, Coco Mademoiselle is known for being very lightweight. It is not one that's going to last very much on the skin. It does become very intimate, very soft. For that same reason, they do sell quite a bit of body products. So they sell lotions, they sell body powders, they sell body cremes, shower gels, all those items to say that this one is not a long-lasting scent. It is an eau de parfum, as both of these are. Now, this one's not going to be a long-lasting scent by any means, so you're going to get anywhere from three to five hours if you're lucky and you decide to go with certain body products to make this last a little bit longer, but it's not going to be a super long-lasting scent. J'adore, on the other hand, although it has a softer trail to it, it's going to last a lot longer on the clothing. It's going to last a lot longer on the skin. They also make body products just like Coco Mademoiselle. But this one itself is going to be a lot longer lasting than Coco Mademoiselle. I don't know if it's just due to the actual formulations or if this one has a higher concentration of oils in it than this one does. Typically, jasmine fragrances don't last very long. This one does knock it out of the park. So I would certainly say that this is a longer lasting fragrance. Both of these are going to be floral scents. They're going to be, you know, very feminine. But with that being said, this one is a little too feminine. And I, the reason I say that's because it's, it's a romantic fragrance. You know, both of these embody their designers. So Dior, as a designer, was very much into the fantasy, you know, the big volume, the big skirts, the 1950s. That era of opulence and elegance is definitely embodied in this fragrance. It is a very confident fragrance. It is a very seductive and sexy fragrance, but at the same time, it is hyper feminine. It is hyper girly, if that makes any sense. And, you know, it's overly elegant. So it is one of those fragrances that does have to be dressed up with. Like I said, you're not going to get that you know, t-shirt and jeans type of look off of this one. Not saying that you can't do that, but it's definitely one that requires a little bit more effort in your wardrobe, at least, to be able to wear this one. Versus Coco Mademoiselle. Coco Mademoiselle also embodies the House of Chanel very, very much. You know, that very streamlined cut jackets that Chanel was so famous for. This fragrance does embody it extremely well. So, it is feminine, but it is versatile, it is modern, it is clean, and it's ahead of its time. And because this fragrance was so ahead of its time, it has lasted through time. So I would certainly say it factor, I would say Coco Mademoiselle is the one to go for. But if you want longer longevity, I would certainly say to get this one. They're both great picks. They're both staples. If you can get both of them, by all means, get both of them. I'm not saying that you have to. If you like floral scents, I would certainly say to try both of these fragrances out as they are both very big icons in the fragrance community. So definitely good fragrances to check out if you are looking for a floral fragrance. But really quickly, if you don't like overly floral, I would certainly say Coco Mademoiselle is the one for you as this is just jam-packed with flowers inside of it. But I really, really, really like both of these. I mean, the bottle presentation on this one is just, oof, just, just gorgeous. And the new bottles are even nicer. Like, let's just say that Dior really does do packaging well. They always have, they always will. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. Which one do you pick? Is there one that you like a little bit better? Let me know down in the comments. I'd be very happy to see it. Also comment down below what fragrances would you like to see comparisons of next. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked today's video and subscribe for more fragrance related content and I'll see you guys on the next one.